<laughs> Hello. Um, so you've seen the two, um, I think, quite commonly used free uh, application. But I'm not sure what non-web-based um, commonly used um, PCB software is. And this is Upworker. How many of you have used or heard of it? Used and heard. No. Okay. All right. So it's probably new to all of you. Um, I have been on their beta program for like a couple of years now, if I'm not wrong. And like with most people and their PCB softwares, I also happen to have a love-hate relationship with this one. Um, also, just so that you understand where I come from, I firstly, as a disclaimer, I don't use this for all my routing, for all my PCBs. I kind of use uh, Eagle. I mostly just use Eagle these days. Um, I am trying out KiCad, perhaps I'll switch, and we might be moving to LTM at work. So, Upworker was something. Yes, also never trust the auto router. Um, uh, Upworker uh, was something I was exploring for uh, my work, and also personally, uh, try to see if it will suit the, suit the need for us. Um, I haven't come to a conclusion, but we're moving to LTM for other reasons, um, and I'll just kind of go through what I what I stumbled across and what kind of software it is and my personal take on it. So the first reason why um, Uploader is really exciting these days is their tagline, never create a part again. If you guys have, I mean, I'm sure most of you have designed a PCB at some point in your life, the most annoying thing is creating a footprint or creating a part because it's the one, it's the one you shouldn't, I mean, you shouldn't screw up any of it but it's the one that is quite easy to mess up. For example, it's very easy, at least for me, to get the orientation wrong, and I have a relay, which is top mounted, but then you have to look at the mirror, and you don't know if it's mirrored or not, uh, because when you place it, it has to be mirrored, and then when you're designing, they all look kind of the same, and you need to visualize it, um, or take a, take a step back and visualize it, or look at the component, and sometimes the components haven't arrived yet, and if uh, the data sheet, or if there's no 3D model of the data sheet, or if you're not as good to understand the datasheet um, better, you will end up getting really confused and you end up having a mirrored image on your foot, on your PCB that you just you can't put the component there, it won't work. So you'll have to put it on the other side uh, and there might be components on the other side, lots of uh, problems, probably have to respin your board. So creating a, creating a part is probably the most annoying thing for most of us. And when I heard, so Upwarder when they came, when they started off, they didn't have this. This came about, I think, a year ago. So I got an e email saying, hey, guess what? We have this new thing called the parts concierge, and then we will create parts for you. And it seemed like no strings attached. You just go there, type in with the part you want, put in the data sheet, and give it a name, and click OK, and you just go to sleep, wake up, and magically you have a part there. Um, so I was like super excited, jumped onto Upwarder that day, and I found a random old triac. It's a super simple uh, TO220. I mean, it'll take me like two minutes to design that part because the footprint exists. But hey, if someone's going to make it for me. Why the hell should I not try it out? So I went and I just like, OK, can you make me this triac? And then I got a little uh, placeholder symbol to just give you this dashed box. And then uh, perhaps I can. Uh, so you can just see how. Uh, so you just go there, manufacturer audible part number, data sheet, and you get a little uh, dash thing. And then you can see here it says queued for creation. Someone is creating it now, and then it gets created. And then once it get, gets created, you get one star. After that, someone is going to verify it, and you get two stars. And it's like two independent human beings verified it, and you don't have to do that stuff anymore. So you just have to worry about uh, uh, your routing and your schematics. and the, fun stuff that you're generally happy doing. So that was fantastic. It's like a dream come true and like PCB design is going to be uh, never same again. So that's how it started. Uh, that that device that I did create that day was magically created overnight. So I went to sleep. I did it at 2 a.m., woke up at 10 or whatever and, and was there. So it was great. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to try this out for a PCB at work. So they give, uh, okay. A uh, bit of a background that I probably completely forgot about um, on the PCB, uh, their business model or whatever. So Eagle has a free version with uh, some limitations. Uh, that is two layers and some size limitations. KiCad obviously is completely open source with their zero limitations. Um, so Upverter is free to use. So 
the, the basic design suite is free. So that's almost all the features. There are a couple of features that are uh, not free, which would be one is you can't have, they have a 3D export thing, like a 3D exp, uh, step model export, which uh, sorry, even the rendering and the export, everything is only for paid users. So if you're on the free tier, you cannot have 3D models. Okay. Uh, another one is uh, they basically are the same model as uh, Circuit Maker, which is another uh, circuit design software that I guess is not featured today, uh, where they give you two private designs and the rest all have to be open. So it's kind of like the GitHub model where if you uh, create a software, if you create a PCB for free, uh, you have to open source it. You cannot, if you want it, if you want private repos, you have to pay for it. That's their business model. And also they have really good collaboration. Uh, it's kind of like Google Docs. So I can be editing something and you will get like, you, you can see me editing it. You can see um, everything updating in real time. Um, also that obviously me has a limitation that is kind of hidden behind the scenes, which is that it's connected. It only works when you connect to the web, um, which is a great thing. It's awesome. And that's all great. But for me, I tend to do most of my work not connected or more like I get distracted. Therefore, I don't connect myself to the web. So I try to, I kind of program, oh, sorry, design in places without network connectivity. So that's a big bummer for me. Um, and Upverter has come a long way from where they started off. Uh, I remember the first time I tried it, they didn't have this Pots CH stuff. It was just a, another tool, very simple, very, very, um, nothing spectacular about it, but they have come a long way. So I will just go through a couple of things that they have. They have this thing called guided trace routing. I will show you later on uh, in the software how it looks like. This is uh, basically when you design PCBs, uh, or maybe I'll just do it now where it's easier. So I have a, uh, my mouse is missing. Okay, there. Okay, so I have a new schematic here. I'm gonna add, um, so let's say we wanna place a resistor down. So they have this concept of generics, which is very similar to how um, KiCad operates in the sense, you want a resistor, place a resistor. You don't have to worry about the footprint. You don't have to worry about the specific device because it's not tied down to anything. Now once I've uh, now once I've placed this resistor down, I can double click on it, and then I can change the footprint. Let's say I'm being ambitious today, and I'll pick a zero eight, zero two zero one, um, and okay, maybe not. It just scares scary. Um, and then you can just uh, change the resistance value to whatever you want it to be, uh, and there you have it. So if I press tab, you can go to the. This is a PCB layout. And there's a footprint there, so there's that. That's one thing where about the whole netlist export stuff, which I think also plagues LTM. You have to go do the whole net, um, netlist export thing, which is like you said, very frustrating. So they have kind of work around it. I mean, I mean, sorry, they have a much better integration. So it's just I just press tab, I can do whatever I want, and it and it syncs up real time, which is really good. So let me place a random. Uh, LED, or maybe I can just place that over here. And then let's give it a random footprint. Uh, I don't know, 1206. Uh, and then let's trace. So we just have a random resistor connected to an LED. I have no idea what this thing does, but it doesn't matter for now. Uh, nobody cares. Um, and the DRC, uh, the design rule check, is done real time. You don't have to click on something and do a design rule check. So you can go here to constraints and it says something is not connected. I have no idea why. Uh, what? Zoom? Zoom? Oh, sorry. Everything seems to be connected. I'm not sure why it is not. But anyway, so now I can go to my uh, PCB layout. Um, and you can see that the resistor is connected. And those are the air wires that have probably been introduced by two by the other two uh, speakers. So what I was talking about earlier, this is the constraints manager page where you can add all the constraints. They, have, they do a pretty uh, good 
job at this. So I can do something like ah, ah. My. Just call it my tracks for some reason. Uh, and that works. Okay, so this is basically uh, saying between two different nets, uh, I should I should have a minimum clearance of 0 0.15 uh, mm. Uh, so if I go to schematics now, uh, sorry, uh, PCB layout and layout, and I do that. And for some, if you if you can see it, uh, I don't think you can. So that's the actual trace width. And you can see the, the boundary, so that's basically the clearance around it. So if you change it to 1 mm or something ridiculous, it's going to become bigger. And while you, while you route it, you will know if you're, if you're satisfying your constraints or not. So if I bring it too close, it's going to turn red and say, no, you can't do that. I mean, that's obviously wrong, but even something like that. Something like this is um, kind of really nice to have when you're routing a complicated board. You tend to get carried away, you're at different zoom levels, and you don't know how far apart the traces are. And then, if I'm doing this on Eagle, I go and click on the DRC, and it's like, oh great, all these traces are too close together, now I have to spread them apart. So if you set up your constraints early on, this is a very, very uh, useful tool to have. And this is a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward feature, you'd expect everything to have it, but not everything has it. And I did not know about this until a, until last week. LTM 16, which I think came out this year or, or late la, or sometime uh, late last year, just introduced this feature as well. So, and you get it for free if you're open sourcing or whatever. PyCat has it as well. That's that's great because I'm gonna use PyCat. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. For VS. Oh yeah, you can you can set the constraints differently here as well between trace and via and trace and trace and whatnot. So another thing I can do is um, I'm not sure how many of you have had to do this, but you might need um, controlled lengths or matched lengths. So if you're if you're routing um, signals that might have race conditions or if you want them to have um, controlled um, length, lengths for some reason, you would need to make sure they're all within a certain uh, tolerance of each other. So I can select the net nets here. Uh, there's a pretty nifty feature uh, over here to select nets, or select anything for that matter. I can just select nets, and then basically do this. And only the nets get selected, which is nice if you want to only select nets and move it around, or delete all the nets, or only select components, or whatever. And then I can right click. How can I right click it? Okay, there. And then I can create a length matching group. So I, I come to um, over here. Oh, wait, that's good. Uh, Um, I'm, I'm not sure why uh, that it's not working. But anyway, you can um, select both of them and go to the constraints and basically set a tolerance. So you saw what the um, the dialog looked like. B basically, you can give it a name, uh, set the tolerance, and then when you when you route it, it will basically tell you if your two lengths are off by 1.27 mm in this case. It will complain and yell at you and say, "Hey, the tracks are." too long or too short, go fix it. And then you can use your serpentine or micro or whatever to uh, you can to, to match the lengths. Um, and 
So they also have a few other nifty features like active layer focus, which um, Google doesn't have, where all the other layers go uh, translucent, and only the active layer that you're working on actually shows up, which gives you a very good idea of, especially with uh, a multi-layer PCB, where if you're routing, routing a set layer, you kind of tend to get um, lost or carried away, or you get you forget about what's beneath it, and you get you, can, you get to see all the pores and all the other tracks and buried and blind bears or whatnot below that are translucent, which is I think quite a nice feature. Um, so I talked about the length matching, and also it has a very nice uh, because it's all um, online and everything. Uh, I'm not sure, but. Eagle's search kind of sucks. It's probably the worst search I've ever used. I shouldn't call it. Even, I should, probably shouldn't even call it search. But the search here is uh, really nice. You can search uh, Vichy six six kilo ohm thick phone resistor or something, and, and you, you you'll find uh, a part. Um, so the thing with uh, the parts concierge is with the free tier, the limitation, as I said earlier, the catch is you get five uh, free parts. That's it altogether. So save it for the five super annoying, frustrating uh, custom part that you ever have to design. But the good thing with Upverter is they have a massive collection of parts. I think it's like 1.4 million or something ridiculous now. And it's actually hard to find components that are not in the database. So I mean, that's a, that, the value of that statement is pretty immense given almost all other tools that I've used. Uh, finding component like uh, footprints has been like my go-to thing. So, so much so that I design with components I can find footprints for. I mean, that's not unless I can't find a component for it. So I'll basically go to Element 14, find a random or uh, whatever, and then I will scroll and look for free Eagle footprint available, and then use it because it just saves me so much more time and less hassle. Um, and the fact that they have 1.4 million or whatever crazy number of parts makes it amazing uh, to design with. So that's a huge plus. Sorry, five minutes? Okay, yeah. So that's a, a huge plus for Upverter, uh, in my opinion. And also the, the kind of um, really nice nifty features, and they're constantly updating. They, they always email me about uh, new features that are coming up, which is also very nice. Compared to, let's say, you buy Altium, uh, where you pay, like, what? $10,000 upfront, and then it's like, you have to pay 2000 or something every year just to get your updates. Whereas here, if you're using the free tier, you're always on the latest version, you always get all the updates. And even if you're paying for it, uh, for, for personal, I don't know, it's, it might be expensive for students or whatever, uh, but for companies, it might totally make sense. It's about, it's, I think it's $100 per user per month. So it still works out to be cheaper than just the update fees for example Altium. Because Altium you have to or pads or whatever for that matter, it's like two thousand dollars per year just to get the free update. Just to get the updates for the for the new version. So in terms of uh, cost, totally makes sense. Although their parts concierge, even the uh, uh, the verified or whatever components aren't great because I actually wanted to design a little board for uh, with upverter for this uh, um, thing and I didn't manage to finish it because I had one rule about uh, designing uh, with Upverter, which is I will never create a part. And that's because that's what they claim, and so I tried never to create a part. So I wanted to create a little USB-C um, to micro USB adapter board where I can set the, set the, set the current manually because, let's face it, uh, all the cables you get off AliExpress because I'm cheap. Uh, have horrible specs and they will just fry your device. Uh, and I basically gave them uh, the USB-C uh, data sheet, uh, the USB-C connector uh, from Worth Electronic uh, data, data sheet, and asked them to create a part for me, and they did. And it has 12 pins when it's supposed to have 24 pins, uh, which was really weird. The moment I saw this, I was like, wait, that's really weird. I hope they have some fancy new hidden feature that I don't know about where I can find the other 12 pins. Uh, and I couldn't find it. I waited for a couple of days, and they, they didn't do anything about it. So I filed a bug report, and I didn't hear from them from them for quite some time. And when I checked again last week, it said update available. So I went there and clicked on the update, and I got a 400 bad request. I tried this like just before the talk, so that's what I got. I don't know if it's better now. So if I click on compare, I still got a bad request. 
and I couldn't upgrade either. I don't know if it works now. Nope, can't upgrade. Uh, so that's been really annoying me and it's little things like this that has been throwing me off Upverter for quite some time now. So I think they're still um, getting there, they're still um, refining their stuff, it's not perfect yet. So keep that in mind. Um, and so if I go to the PCB layout for example for this thing, this uh, connector is a dual sided connector. So if that's your PCB, it's a really, it's kind of a weird connector, the, the connector goes like that. Uh, so it puts a constraint on the PCB thickness. It has to be 0.8 mm. It won't work with thicker because it just won't fit. Thinner ones also probably won't work. So it has to be that thickness and it's a dual sided thing. So you have a, the top uh, traces and bottom traces. Uh, that's how the connector works. Uh, but you'll be surprised to find out with the thing they designed for me. Uh, if I hide all on the top, there's nothing below. So that also got uh, me really annoyed. So it doesn't work. Uh, although the parts are supposed to be verified and all, uh, take it with a pinch of salt if you have a really weird part, and that's probably what you want to use it for, so yeah, I'll take it with a pinch of salt. Sorry? Exactly weird. They're not exactly weird, but this one's a little, it's new and it's different, so I guess it's weird until everybody adopts it, perhaps. But yeah, so that, that threw me off a little bit, and I was also designing another board um, earlier for my uh, work. Uh, it was this uh, uh, breakout for a for an ADC, for an ADC, and I, I wanted to do this. Uh, this is something you can probably get done in Eagle, maybe in a in a week over the evening or something. Uh, and if you want to look at the schematic, uh, it's uh, anyway. So. The issue with this was I did not want to create this part. It's a it's the ADC itself uh, because I have this policy not to create parts with Upverter, and I asked them to create the part for me. It said, "Okay, ETA 60 minutes. That's great. Let me go, you know, take a nap and come back, and it should be done." And uh, 60 minutes became a day. It became three days, and it just got stuck at three days for an entire month, and. I basically went, designed the entire thing in Eagle and came back and it was still like queued for a bit or whatever. So maybe they discriminated against me because I'm in the free tire. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't know. I don't have any, um, any info, but I don't know. It's, they just couldn't create it. Maybe it's a really annoying part to create. I'm glad I didn't create it. I, I found one for Eagle, so that's great. Um, but yeah, it took me really long and now they, see, they seem to have an upgrade that I just found out about. So. It's a, the concierge is a little bit of a hit or miss because there are actual, real, living, flesh, body people making these things. So they're, they're only human, I guess, and they're, they're making this. So it's going to be a hit or miss. Maybe they'll get much better in the future. So that's that. And I think I've covered everything. I don't know. This was kind of impromptu, so it's probably all over the place. If you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot. Yeah. I think we'll go for one question. Right. If not, we will. Uh, you'll post the slides online, and we'll ask you there. Sure. Cool. Thank you, Sean.